What's up everybody? Good afternoon. I'm a little bit late with this video. I had some stuff come up and it got my schedule a little bit jumbled, but uh, I want to talk about some of the things that have happened today as it pertains to the Seahawks. Because um, even though it is the slow season for actual actionable items, there are some things going on with the Seahawks right now and I want to go over it because it's compelling. It's interesting. Uh, first thing that I want to briefly touch on is something from this morning. This was reported from a couple different places. I got it up here on screen from Aaron Wilson. Seahawks meeting with veteran free agent guard Greg Van Roten. I believe I discussed Van Roten a little bit in the uh, pre-free agency period, but um, he's obviously one of the remaining um, half-decent veteran guards out there that haven't signed. So it makes sense that if the Seahawks are looking for assistance at that uh, those positions, they would be kicking the tires on a guy like Greg Van Roten. So I want to talk about this for a little bit. Since he's visiting, something could happen. Something could happen by the end of day today. Something could happen by the time you watch this video. So it's, uh, it's not just some rumored thing like it was with uh, Randy Gregory, who I'm going to talk about at the end of this video a little bit. Um, Van Roten's actually meeting with them, and... Um, Van Roten was pretty good last year. Uh, you go to PFF, he played the whole season, played over a thousand snaps for the Raiders, had good grades. Um, yeah, I mean, what what else can you ask for from a 34-year-old, or well, at the time, 33-year-old player? Now, that age thing is obviously not so great. Um, Greg Van Roten has been in this league so long, in fact, he uh, was on the practice squad for the Seahawks team that went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Patriots. So he's been around. And um, obviously he's getting to the point where you start to wonder, is he going to be able to do anything? At the same time, though, he's kind of coming off his best season. He played the whole year. He was graded out well, respectable metrics. You go back to some of these previous years, he doesn't play that much. He's not graded out quite as well. Uh, he misses time. He uh, is kind of coming off a career year with the Raiders, so maybe that age thing isn't even that big of a concern, it, it, I guess it just depends on your perception on it, so, oh, sorry, but uh, yeah, Greg Van Roten would be decent, I will say this, he's a right guard, he's a right guard, so signing a guy like Van Roten would probably bank, uh, bump out a guy like Ankrum, which is totally fine, but it doesn't really do anything for the left guard spot, and that's the position where we don't have anything, which is why I've been circling the wagons around a guy like Dalton Risner, who is a left guard. So, obviously, a guy like a Greg Van Roten could push Bradford for the starting job. But I would be thinking about him more in terms of bumping out a guy like Ankrum, who is barely rosterable in the NFL. And in a perfect world, you would have better guys than Ankrum ready to go on your team. But at the same time, I'm also thinking to myself... How much is he going to move the needle at the right guard spot when we have Bradford, who played okay last year and projects to get much better this year, compared to the left guard spot, where we literally have nothing? So we'll see what happens with Greg Van Roten. Once again, I want to stress, yes, we're out of money, but we can also create more cap space if we really want to. There are many ways to do it, and I'm sure we're going to utilize one of those things. We're going to have to as is. Bringing in a guy like Van Roten on a minimum contract or min plus is not going to change that. So we'll see what happens there. If we sign him later, I'll report on it. And uh, that's the main thing going on there. Now, there was one other thing that happened earlier today. Brady Henderson with the latest here in this tweet. Seahawks announced a big change in their front office. Matt Thomas is out. And Joey Lane is in as the VP of Football Administration. So Matt Thomas has left the organization after 11 seasons. So he was here for most of Carroll's tenure. He was here for most of Schneider's tenure. Uh, Thomas oversaw their cap and negotiated their contracts, according to Brady Henderson. So he was part of that process. I'm not going to try to speculate on exactly what this means and what this might represent. We're going to have to wait and find out. Uh, I believe Joey Lane is from the Packers tree. <coughs> That's one thing that I know about him. So he comes from where Schneider comes from, I suppose. But 
at the end of the day, how much of an impact does the VP of football administration have in terms of actual decision making that matters to us as fans? I don't know. That I don't know. That's hard to um that's hard to estimate because we know that a guy like Schneider is obviously very involved in stuff like cap and contracts and Thomas is probably just part of the process and now Lane's going to be part of that process but is the lack of his presence or the introduction of his presence going to change that process that I think we're just going to have to wait and see on that one and see if anything changes like maybe starting next year this team starts doing four-year deals when they very rarely do four-year deals they only do four-year deals on their super duper blue chippers guys like Metcalf guys like Wilson they they try to keep the contract short otherwise maybe next year will represent a change but in order to know that we're gonna have to see it so definitely a big change but it remains to be seen how it impacts things I'll put it to you like that and the uh, last thing I wanted to talk about real quick here in terms of Seahawks adjacent news Randy Gregory is signing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers um, not super relevant to us Seahawks fans. However, it is worth noting that it was rumored the Seahawks were looking at Randy Gregory. So he's obviously off the table now. He was going to be presumably an edge rusher. Um, I still don't see any way Daryl Taylor makes this team. So he probably would have taken Daryl Taylor's spot. Um, I didn't really speak about the Randy Gregory thing when it came out because there was nothing concrete there. It was just like, oh, it's rumored that there might be some interest, but I didn't really want him. Randy Gregory, he's kind of like the definition of fool's gold. You look at him, you're like, oh, he's a good player. He can do good stuff. He's going to get out there and play great, and then he gets hurt. Or he does something stupid. Or something is just going to go wrong, and you're not going to get much out of him. He did do kind of sort of okay for the 49ers last year, but, I mean, when you're playing behind Bosa and Young and with Armstead and all the guys they got on that defense, you're, you're going to get something going. So I don't put a lot of stock into that. And, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really have much excitement for that. I didn't think he moved the needle at this point. And even if he could move the needle, he was unlikely going to be able to do so because, again, he's just one of those guys who always gets in his own way. All right, so that's really about it. The main thing that people are going to be kind of chomping at the bit on would be this guard news, the Van Roten thing, which, hey, bring him in. Certainly got no problem with that. He's not going to cost that much more than Ankrum. And he's better than Ankrum by a long shot. And he could even push Bradford for the start. But the real impact is going to be felt on the other side. And as of right now, I don't know what the plan is over there other than pray that the right guys fall to you in the draft. Okay, let me know what you think. Go Hawks. Another video coming later.